It's that time when we start on the backs. They have only been rough shaped, very rough shaped. I just used an angle grinder with a burr blade on it to rough shape these. And all I did was just knock off the steep corners. I didn't even get close to where the carving would start yet. I think I started on the UK one on the top first, so we're gonna start on the Florida one on the back first. We're just kind of alternating back and forth. We'll start with this rough out plane and see how, how this works. On these backs, you almost have to go across grain. Try to go with the grain and you hit those curls and the curls just stick. It's kind of, you can kind of go 45-ish, but you pretty much have to go across grain to cut it. Well, it'll be boring as heck watch me do that for several hours, and it's gonna be several hours. So, we'll just show you what it looks like as I get a little further down the road. I felt like I've been doing without one of these bench dogs such a long time. I used to have one of these. I made one years ago. So I just spent five minutes and made this. Um, it's really simple. It's just, in this case, a piece of three-quarter plywood. You put a three-quarter cleat on one end and on the other end. And I also put a slight bevel back under this and that helps it grip the edge of the table really good. And the same way on this. So it doesn't matter which way you turn it, it'll grip the table. And anyway, you can use this a lot of ways, like when I'm pushing here, this will hold that now. So like if I want to carve this out, it's held in place. I used to chase this all over the table, you've seen it in my videos even. And most of the time it's because I, it only takes a couple minutes to carve one of these. But I figure, you know, I'll use it down the road more and more and I have two of these to carve right now, so it just makes things easier. What I like to do on these things is, is draw in the detail too, so I'll just take a minute and pause and draw in the detail. Something like that. It helps me get an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect because you, you carve it way down for a long time. Yes, I know there's other things called bench dogs too that go through the table and all that. I understand that. And I may not be using the proper term for this. I don't remember, but that's what I remember calling it. about it. Still quite a bit more to go and I can do that with my planes and things. I don't know if this will help me on my, might even help me on my plane in a little bit. Well that took me about an hour and a half to get that work down to that shape right there and that's pretty nice. It looks pretty good. It's got a nice shape to it. It feels good. You know, I haven't got done with detail yet, but that's just the outside and that's the Florida mandolin. All I have to do now is do another one. Well, there's what 45 minutes worth of work will get you on the second mandolin. It's still not as far, quite as far along as the first one. I, I need to do some more work on it, but I'm gonna take a break and go eat some lunch and give my fingers a rest. I don't know if you can see how it puts a pretty good strain on your fingers. Yeah, I had uh, one viewer after the last video carving the tops suggested that I put band-aids on there. Well, in the old days, I used to do that. I used to put band-aids on there all the time, but they bother me. I don't like them in when I'm carving. They just get in my way. If 
for the most part, I don't really get blisters anymore. I guess my hands are just used to it, calloused. But uh, that doesn't make mean they don't get a little sore, a little tender, and uh, the arthritis don't help anything there either. But this is looking pretty good. Um, you know, they definitely are twin mandolins. There's almost no doubt about that. <laughs> so this one might have just a slightest tighter curl than this one, but just barely. They're both very, very high grade pieces. Well, I've got both of them rough carved on the outside now. And uh, believe it or not, they both weigh exactly the same amount. They weigh 366 grams right now, which doesn't mean a whole lot. I'm trying to decide if I want to start carving the insides or go ahead and smooth this off. And I think I'll go ahead and smooth it off. So I think I'll use a scraper on it. It's a cabinet scraper sharpened in a particular way, beveled all on one side, and then when you get it razor sharp, honed it and everything, then you burnish that edge over and make it curl over. Then you should be able to just scrape this really clean and, and neat. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to scrape the whole thing on both of them, get them both really scraped out. And I'll get real satisfied with the way that looks and I'll show you what that looks like and we'll weigh them again. Another wonderful viewer friend sent in uh, some miniature scrapers and those are proven to be very handy right in here. Uh, it's really nice to get into this detail and have a scraper that'll reach in and just scrape it smooth. I really like them. So, thank you to the viewer who sent these in. I really appreciate it. I don't keep track of all that stuff. Uh, I should, but I'm just bad about it. And I don't re recall which person sent them to me. If you'll make a comment, I would sure like to thank you again. Yeah, they work awesome. They work really awesome. It's just as smooth as it can be around there now. Yeah, that's really a nice tool. Thank you very much. Well, friends, uh, I've got this thing scraped just smooth as silk. And I did 99% of it with that, that little tiny scraper. This came in a set, and I think, that, I think there was a miniature one like this also, but I can't find it right now. But anyway, it came in a scraper set like this. And I'm telling you, these things are awesome. This little scraper here, let me get in around this point because, you know, it sticks out and I got in here and was able to scrape it smooth. They just work great. And if you've never used a scraper before, well, let me highly, highly recommend getting you one a set like this. I mean, I've always, for 30-some years, been using this big thing and you know sharpen it and it works good don't get me wrong but it's a ton of work to sharpen and get the edge beveled over these don't even have an edge they're just flat and they scrape like you would not believe just get you some do yourself a favor get you some of those they, unfortunately i've lost the records on who sent this to me I don't know uh, where they got it. I don't have the packaging, so you'll just have to search out there. I'm sure you could probably find it on eBay. I'm gonna be looking and get me another set. <laughs> They're awesome. If you don't know how to use one, you kind of hold it at an angle like this and you drag it. And you put your finger behind there to kind of get pressure on that. And uh, you just drag it and, it, and you know, hardwood is easier to scrape, don't get me wrong. Softwood is harder, is actually harder to scrape and get it smooth. So I haven't tried it on softwood yet, but right now I can tell you on hardwood, this thing is perfect. This is seriously so smooth, I don't think I would need to sand it. I really do think I could put the finish on there right now. It's just glass smooth. Let's see what it weighs now that we've got her cleaned up. 
It was 366 grams the last time I checked it. And uh, now I'm going to say it's going to be 10 grams less. 358. So almost 10 grams less. Uh, 366 down to 358. So there you go. 8 grams less. And just as smooth as it can be. And all I did was scrape it. You know, you can see how, like up in these detail areas, how you can scrape that really smooth, where you can't really get in there with sandpaper and chisels and all that stuff is a pain. That scraper gets right in there and just pulls all the marks out. Just really, really does a nice job. So, if you've never used a scraper and want to get into it, here's an easy way to get into it right here. By the way, this one that is already scraped smooth is the UK Mandolin. This is the Florida Mandolin. I'm getting ready to start scraping it. I'm going to start with this. Uh, might as well use it since I've got it and, and uh, save the edges on those little ones. You notice I'm kind of going at a 45. If you pull across those grains, those ripples will emphasize themselves. And if you go directly across, you tear, get a little bit of tear out. So 45 is about the best. The old timer purists never touch their instruments with sandpaper. They said they only use scrapers. Well, I won't say I do that. I, on the inside, I don't use sandpaper at all because the scraping is plenty smooth for the inside. But I personally had never got one smooth enough, I don't think, until maybe this one, that I could skip the sanding. This one I might be able to skip the sanding on, and we might at least stain it that way and see what it looks like. The reason they don't like to sand them, they claim, is that they don't want to fill the pores of the wood which I think is bogus on the outside of the instrument because your finish is going to fill the pores anyway. So I think that's, you know, just a bogus thing in my opinion. I have both mandolins carved to my satisfaction on the outside, at least right now. Almost always I end up touching them up a little bit more as I'm carving the inside. But right now they're uh, carved pretty well, not 100% smooth, but pretty close to it. They weigh exactly the same amount. They both weigh 358 grams. So that ought to be some kind of ballpark for someone to look at. I think I'll start on the uh, Florida one first on carving the inside. And generally the first thing I do is uh, I just mark off a perimeter here of about Oh, roughly a quarter inch, a little bit more, you know. And that's just a ballpark, just to kind of keep my eye in line there. And uh, just so I don't cut too much, I don't want to get around this outer edge and cut that, because that needs to stay flat. And again, you can see then that I can cut this out in here. Um, and, and then if these, this here pattern, you really don't need it. You just kind of connect the dots here. Something like that will work fine. And sort of here too, you just... It's just a ballpark thing of where to cut and where not to cut. So, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's just start carving the inside out. Now, actually, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you my process with the angle grinder of just knocking a little bit out of here. I'm not going to knock much out of here because I don't want to take a chance on getting through this. But, but this deep dish right here in the middle, I can certainly knock out. So I can knock out a few inches in here like this and just kind of knock a little bit out. That just saves a little bit of hand planing and it does it really fast. So we'll do that first. Well, as you can see, that burr makes pretty short work of it. It's just a, a burr there, 
and uh, it cuts, it does a nice job, doesn't dig in too much. There's a fellow out there called Stinnett Sticks, and he makes uh, hand carved walking sticks, and he uses this tool a lot. So that's where I saw it, and I got me one, and I'm glad I did. Now, I could go a lot more than this and be safe, but I don't really want to. I just want to carve the rest by hand. Um, I don't want to take a risk on a $300 piece of wood that I might just go, you know, a sixteenth of an inch too deep. So, anyway, that should work just fine. The only drawback to using this is the mess it makes, and it makes a mess. It goes everywhere. So you have to clean all that up. It weighs 290 grams right now, so we knocked off a pretty good chunk there. There's just a lot more of this to do, so we'll show you what it looks like when we get there. I've spent about 10 more minutes of carving time on this now, and uh, it's now down to 252 grams, which is getting quite a bit lighter. And I just thought I'd show you the difference here between um, this one, which has only been roughly dished with just a little bit, not hardly anything really, just enough to get me started downhill with the uh, angle grinder, as you saw in the video. I didn't really knock very much out. I could have knocked a lot more out of there, to be honest. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can see how much I knocked out. Not very much. And co as compared to this one, which you can see is quite a bit now, so it's pretty deep now. Here's the difference in tone. Now here's the one that's not been carved. This is the UK mandolin right now. Very high pitched tone. Now listen to this one. The tone is much lower. So it's got a very low, deep tone, and it's not even even close to where it's going yet. It'll have a much more sustained, uh, more vibra vibration, and uh, much deeper tone yet. I'm, I'm also feeling it this way so that I can feel any bumps on the outside. Once you start carving the inside, it's for me, those bumps show up better. I already got rid of one right in here. I'm feeling something a little bit right in here, but not very much, just being picky. And I'm just using these little scrapers to clean that up. So right now, that's pretty deep. It's well over a quarter inch deep. I don't know just how deep it is yet, but it's pretty deep. And we just have a lot more of that to do, so. What I'm gonna do now is just check it here and find the thickest places and pick out and, and just see where some of the thickest places are. I've hit it pretty good with this rough, roughing out plane now and I've got it 
in pretty good shape. Oh, it could go more, I know. But I think I'm going to switch to the... Uh, I'm going to keep the rough out plane, but I think I'm going to switch to the tooth blade now to uh, level it up and just to see where I'm at, you know, get a pretty good measure of where I'm at before I go much further and, and regret something. I'm knocking out any real big humps right now. good right now we're gonna switch over to that tooth blade as I said That I've earned it to find Cause I'll be out on that ranch Where I can reach the first branch Of that corporate tree grown from on high I don't own it, it just manage its worth It's a small slice of heaven Place down here on earth Care for his trees, water his son I don't own it, it just rent it from God Feelings, no debt, we're all doing the best we can. So here is my last word, some may think it absurd, but I know that someday you'll find it's better to leave than to stay and to grieve instead of a paycheck, you'll have peace of mind. I don't want it, just manage its worth. It's a small slice of heaven. Place down here on earth, I care for his trees, I water his son, I don't know did it just read it from God. Was just wonderful I wasn't paying attention and the carpet slid like that and uh, knocked this thing off the table and now it doesn't work it just sticks like this it doesn't go up and down like it should so that's always wonderful doggone it anyway just one of the hazards of shop working I guess so now I'll have to buy me a new meter and put it on here well, fortunately, all is not lost. When I made this little deal for uh, string height, I bought two of these meters. And sure enough, I have the other one still in paper. So hopefully I can put it right on here and keep working. Because I got to have this to carve these backs. And so let's see how this looks. Looks pretty good actually. I think it's going to be fine. It seems like it's working really good. So I'll take a little break here, remount this, and see how it works. My friends, fixing that gauge was a piece of cake. It was so simple. Not. It took forever. <laughs> it just nothing worked. The uh, I don't I don't want to go into all the details, but. The backing plate on the other on the uh, 
new on this new gauge didn't fit this so I had to take the backing plate off the old gauge the backing plate on the old gauge didn't fit this gauge etc 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 that didn't work then there was a difference in this top up here that I had to work on and all kinds of stuff it just took forever but I've got it working you can see there hopefully that it's zeroed out it is zeroed out and I've tested it on a number of things with against a micrometer and different things and I'm getting about a this one seems to read about a thousandth of an inch bigger than everything that I'm testing it against but one thousandth of an inch isn't very big <laughs> I just wish it was perfect you know because that's what I want but you know I'll just keep that in mind because I measure these things in thousands you know and I really want it to be right but I know that sounds probably pretty stupid to most of you out there but that's just the way it is but anyway it's fixed and I think I can limp along with that it's 4 45 in the afternoon been carving on these most of the day and I've got them both rough carved and they're both 240 grams, believe it or not. Both are making a nice tone, just so you can hear the tone right now. Of course, this is nowhere near finished, but just to hear it now, this is the UK mandolin. Now that, you know, it, the tone is always different on the backs than it is from the tops and it's never got the same sustain. This one seems to have a little deeper tone. This is the Florida mandolin. They have about a one or two seconds sustain. This one's got a higher tone, but the tone is more clear on this one. So I don't know how that's gonna play into things. And like I said, they're nowhere near finished carving yet. These are actually very thick still, very rough carved. Be under 200 grams for sure by the time I'm done. And I suspect around 130 or so grams is what I'm thinking I remember that they weigh when I get done with them. But we got a lot to do yet. So there's a lot of, a lot of material to remove here yet. Well, it's been a couple of more days probably since I was working on this. I let them both just kind of sit and so I come back to them fresh. The first thing I did was, now this is the UK mandolin, and the first thing I did was take it down to a pretty close to the thickness that I want right here in the center. Well then I started feeling the contours and I'm not, I wasn't happy with the contour to the outside to that. So I basically have recarved this whole outside on the UK mandolin here. And I'm probably going to do the same thing on the Florida mandolin. <laughs> but I have spent the last hour and a half uh, just recarving this outside. For lack of a better term, I would call this like a marble track right here that's kind of a dish and I'm exaggerating. I don't make my marble track real deep. I think if you laid a marble in there, it would probably be able to stay in there. But if you just tilt it slightly, it'd fall right out. So it's not a deep marble track. After I got that marble track in there, then I started feeling this, and then I felt like this back was too abrupt to the, to the center. And so I carved a lot off the back. The idea of this shape, besides the fact that it has to vibrate, the, the other idea of the shape is that it has to bounce the sound out the sound holes. If there's too much bulk back here, in other words, if too much of the bowl is back here, well then the sound is bouncing out back here. I want the sound to be directed to the center so it's coming out those holes, you know. So I don't want to come back here deep and then come up, you know what I mean? If that makes sense to you, this is the back of the mandolin. So I don't want to come in deep and then come up abruptly. I want it to have a long taper towards the center. And so that's what I did there with this carving on the outside. I just didn't feel like it was right where I wanted it. I moved quite a bit of wood. Every bit of the wood that you can see on the table here was moved uh, this morning. So, I mean, that's, it doesn't, it's not a ton of wood because we're down to the detail here, but, but there's still quite a bit. 
So anyway, that's that's what I've done. I just wanted to tell you that and that theory about getting the sound to the middle of the instrument to bring it out, you know. The other part of this, besides the vibration and the getting the sound to the middle, is that it's such a hardwood, that's what bounces the sound back out. The softwood on the top makes the sound, it hits this back, and it bounces right back out. But only if it's done correctly, you know. So that's what we're working on. I'm about ready to smooth this back out again. I can feel a little bit maybe right in here. And of course I can do some of that with this, with the uh, scraper. But uh, I really do wanna, you know, get it just right. You only get one shot at all this stuff. And yeah, that, it's a lot more work to recarve it again and then have to re-smooth it again. But I'd rather do that and have a perfect sound in mandolin than, you know, to screw around with it. Taking the lazy way out, just don't cut it on instruments. You know, I mentioned earlier, and some of you probably thought I was in jest or being dramatic, that the secret to carving this hard maple is you have to have more willpower than the wood. Well, I really don't think I've ever spoke more true words than that. <laughs> My, you know, drifting off on the side here, I think if I were to invite any of you here and watch me do this, and you would look at it and go, well, that doesn't look that hard. And it really doesn't, because it this thing really does turn the wood right off of there. You know, it just cuts it right off, no problem. But most people that I've shown this to, when they sit down and try it, and I'll give them a soft piece of wood, and the plane just either sticks like that or it just slides and they don't cut anything. And they try and they try and they try and they don't get anything. It's muscle memory for me and I know the angle and the feel of it. But my guess is most of you trying this for the first time would probably not move much more wood than about a uh, popsicle stick in the first 15 or 20 minutes of trying it. It's not as easy as it looks. It is tough on your fingers. You know, a lot of people have suggested I wear things on my fingers. I don't have any blisters on my fingers. I'm used to doing this. It's kind of like when you first learn to play a guitar. Yeah, it hurts your fingers like crazy. You get your calluses and you get used to doing it and it doesn't bother you. That's the way this is with I sometimes play it up to the camera so you can see how what number it does on your fingers. I mean, it definitely puts the marks on your fingers, but I don't generally get blisters from it anymore. They do get a little tender though. Put something on your fingers, then you don't get the feel. You know, you can't feel it as well. I really like that now. I, I really like, I'm glad I took the time to do that. It just feels so much better. And now I guess we'll scrape it again. So I'm not gonna bore you with that, but I'll pick up my scraper and rough scrape it with this and detail scrape it with this. Well, just one more thing I wanted to tell you about carving is this scroll. You know, I, the scroll doesn't really make much difference in terms of sound. It is pretty much just a decorative feature and just, you know, a beautiful feature. And so, you know, you want it to be as nice as possible because of that, and so, just, I mean, it may be obvious to everyone, but this is your high point and you just want it to continually come down and come down and, and then just drift out into nothing. And that's, so that, I recarved this whole thing this morning as well. And I wasn't happy with that because it just came in too high into the body up here like this. So I carved it way down and, and it's, I like the look of it now. It's got a nice taper all the way down. And I, this one's closer on that. I don't think it's as bad, but I, I'll probably work on that a little bit too when I carve the rest of this. For another quick status update, I'm getting close on this UK mandolin to having it done, but it's, I say close, I, it's still quite a ways away, several hours away, I would imagine, of carving. Uh, it's down to 194 grams. This one, we stopped at 240 on this one. So that'll give you an idea. There's another 50 grams roughly that's come off of this one. I would expect that we're gonna take off another 20 or more grams before we're done, if not more than that. I know the it just manage its work. It's a small slice of heaven placed down here on earth. Care for his trees. I 
I water his son and I'll own it It just ran it from God so much of this carving and scraping on the tops and backs of these two mandolins that I think I can do it in my sleep. Score! I'm done. I got both of these carved. Both backs are carved now. They're virtually identical. Carved them to my Lloyd Lohr specs as best I could. Very, very close to those specs. And they both weigh, surprisingly, the exact same amount. They both weigh, well, that's not 100% true. This one says 176 and occasionally goes to 174. And this one is 176, occasionally goes to 178. Uh, as I told you, my scale has got a two gram resolution. And so they're within a couple of grams at the very most different. I'm real happy with both of them. So we can now say this is how far we are. This is, uh, those two are the Florida, these two are the UK. So now we have two very thin mandolins. Be patient with me because I have to build necks and sides and I've got a lot of other instruments in the shop, so I'm not sure how quick I'll get the next video out on this, but I'll do my best. I hope you're enjoying the mandolin build so far. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done that yet, and I would really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps get these videos out in front of other people. The more thumbs up you get, the more Google promotes your video. Thank you very much.